Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. Uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are uh, brand new to us, guys, like, share, subscribe. It'll help the channel uh, to grow and hopefully provide you continuous, unbiased, um, daily technical analysis. Uh, there was no video yesterday. I had a last-minute thing uh, at my kid's school and my wife couldn't make it, so uh, daddy daycare uh, always comes first. And unfortunately, there was no uh, video last night, but we kind of go back to Tuesday night's video. If you guys remember on Tuesday, uh, we talked about a pretty big level here on the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, which is the 150 day moving average, this 350 and a half level. And basically my points were on Tuesday's video, if the bulls can get above, you know, just get above that 350 and a half, three, excuse me, three, yeah, 350 and a half, uh, 351 level, we could start maybe a multiple day run. So that's where we are right now. We're in a, you know, we're in a pretty aggressive multiple day run. Uh, not only did we uh, reclaim back the 150 day, we got back uh, the 100 day EMA, and we are very, very close. I mean, really, really close uh, getting back above the 50 day moving average. Why is the 50 day moving average very important? Well, as if you've been watching these videos for a long time, or even if you haven't, uh, you'll notice two things I talk about. Uh, the 10 day moving average is the birth of the trade. Basically, what that means is short and medium term confirmation uh, happens on a, sh on a moving average basis, both in the five and the 10 day cross. Uh, but the birth of a trend, right? A potential trade, a trend happens at the 50 day moving average. And if you look at the 50 day moving average just in the last, you know, X amount of months, you could kind of see the importance of it. So here's the 50 day moving average. Uh, the last time we reclaimed the 50 day moving average, and it gave us a run from January all the way to da, 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 all the way to uh, August. Okay, what happened in August? We lost the the, ten, uh, the 50 day moving average, and what happened? It gave us a pretty big sell off, right? It gave us a nice sell off in the next two months, and in October we reclaimed it back, right? We reclaimed it back and had a five day run, only to lose it, and only have a three day run. So here we are, right? Here we are back to the 50 day moving average. So this is the area that you need to write down. Uh, if you are especially a risk on trader, what is a risk on trader? I believe if you're swinging anything, it needs to be above the 50 day moving average. If you're swinging something below the 50 day moving average, uh, you're going to have a very, very tough time because there's no guarantee your stock will ever get above. Again, just look back in 2022, how many stocks I uh, just never recovered, right? The UPSTs of the world, you know, stuff, stuff like that. They just never recovered. Um, so it's very, very important that the bulls reclaim back. Uh, the 50 day moving average, and that is going to be in the 364s, right? The 364 level uh, is going to be big because last time, again, you can see here, last time we reclaimed the 50 day moving average, we went on a run from 367 uh, all the way to three, uh, 374, basically a seven point move in three days on the queues. So it's super duper important. Now, here's the, here's the million dollar question because we had this run up, right? Because we had this run up from 350 to 364, is the market tired, right? Is the market just going to com continuously go through the 50 day and keep on going. That's the hard part to, to kind of determine. We don't know that, but we do know uh, one thing about the 50 day moving average. There's usually a pretty big fight that takes place at the 50 day. Matter of fact, when you look at uh, the fight here, this is a fight for a week and a half over control of the 50 day moving average. And ultimately the bears took control and you saw what happened later, right? We went when they took finally to control uh, the Qs run from 371 all the way down to 356 in a matter of six days. So it's super duper important. What I think is going to happen tomorrow, if it happens at all, again, we'll get to, the, to Apple and some key uh, key figures to kind of might derail it for, for a day or two. But if in case it does get there tomorrow, in, you know, somewhere in the 364s, there's a higher probability than not they will get rejected the first time around. Doesn't mean it's going to be a hard wall and the market will never go up again. It just means that the first time around, and you can see it even here on the reverse, right? The first time they tested the 50, what happens later? They bounce. They tested the 50 again, they bounce. So here should be kind of the, the opposite, right? If the bulls somehow could get into the 364s, there should be a, a level of resistance there, both from the technical point of view, just the rejection the first time around, 
and to the point of we just had a one, two, three, four, five, six day, right? Six day consolidation running gap uh, into supplies. It's going to be very, very tight. Remember, uh, you could be the greatest world class uh, athlete in the world, but if you run a marathon that's 26 miles, that's pretty tiring. If you run a marathon at 26 miles and you still feel pretty good, you know, they, they kind of change the game when you tell you, well, it's not a marathon anymore. It's a triathlon. Now you have to swim uh, for, 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 you know, for five miles. You have to bike for 10 miles. And oh, by the way, you got to run another 26 miles. Even the greatest athlete in the world is going to be tired. And I think that's kind of where it are here. Uh, I think that 364 is, is going to be a bit, big battleground. And that's an area, if you want to test a, a short position on that area, that's probably the highest probability that at least they'll get rejected at least once. That rejection could be 50 cents. That rejection could be a dollar. That could, rejection could be $4. Or that rejection could be nothing, right? And the bulls continue to fight in that level and eventually uh, fight across and reclaim and then close it on the, on the close. And any close above the 364 is obviously bullish and risk goes on. And that's when you can start uh, building your inventory on a potential swing uh, basis. However, a couple of companies are going to, uh, you know, some companies are going to uh, have something to say. Uh, this evening, uh, as you guys know, uh, Apple came out with earnings. Uh, you know, here are the metrics. Here's the metrics on Apple. Uh, Apple revenue breakdown. The iPhone uh, revenue, they beat. Uh, the iPad revenue, they beat. Uh, the China revenue, they missed. But I think everybody kind of knew they were going to miss. Um, the fourth quarter wearables, uh, they missed as well. Ultimately, ultimately the stock is, you know, down about a dollar 50 after the close, nothing really crazy, nothing really nuts. Uh, once in a while, the stock did have a really nice session, just like a lot of other stocks. So it's basically gave back about a half of the day. It's really interesting to see by the time you are watching this, uh, this broadcast, you know, where's, you know, where's Apple going to be? Because their conference calls me starting soon. Uh, you know, by the time you watch this, this thing could be at 380, you know, 180, or it could be at 173. We don't know. Again, we, I record uh, these videos at around uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time uh, before the, you know, conference calls. That's why sometimes, uh, you know, you see a crazier price. Like, for example, last time uh, we spoke about Meta, Meta was up eight points. By the time, uh, you know, the video was... <laughs> was sent out. Meta was down five, six more. And so again, we'll see where Apple is, but for now uh, it's holding up fairly well. But if you look at the scoreboard uh, this time around, some really great moves in the last 24 hours. You had AMB with an incredible quarter uh, rested today. Shopify had an absolute phenomenal quarter today, 20 plus uh, per, uh, move on the stock. Great numbers, right? Great numbers. Roku uh, had an absolute uh, killer quarter as well. Uh, doing very, very well. Amazon had a nice quarter, is price improving. Even names like Microsoft that had a good quarter sold off and now closing at all their highs. So so the stage is set, right? The uh, stage is definitely set uh, for tomorrow. Are the bulls finally going to be able to reclaim the 50-day moving average? We'll see. You know, we'll see. That's the best way of saying it. Uh, names that didn't do well, that had some pretty good option flow, guys. And this is sometimes where you look at the options mark and you see where they're betting. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but the, the, the more frequent you see uh, bets coming in the options market ahead of earnings, they usually give a pretty good insight of what people are thinking. And today uh, you had NET come out with earnings uh, and they were betting pretty aggressively uh, all morning here. They were coming for the uh, next week's $50 puts. And if you look at NET uh, after the close, uh, NET went all the way down to 49 something about 53, but you know, again, they were you know, betting in the right direction. Uh, Coinbase also uh, came out with earnings uh, before before the close. They were coming in for the January 80s, for the next week, 74s, 75s, 80s on Coinbase. And if you look at Coinbase uh, after the close, uh, Coinbase is getting hit. Again, is it really a surprise? I mean, if you, if you think about the whole crypto market, I'm not really a big crypto guy. But if you think about crypto, crypto market has been dead for months and months. Only recently has Bitcoin kind of started surging again and people started talking about it. So, I, you know, the, it makes sense. We actually were talking about it uh, in the webinar before I, I, I left. Uh, it does kind of make sense that, that, you know, that there were definitely um, uh, players betting against uh, the Coinbase uh, quarter. Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla woke up the last couple of days. Last time uh, we were talking, Tesla was all the way down here. I had a runner, right? I had a runner. I was up about 10 points in the runner. Ultimately, I closed off my runner, uh, you know, up a couple of points there just to give it an opportunity. It had a really good run, right? It had an absolutely good run. And it kind of mirrors now, uh, it kind of mirrors now what's happening on the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100 
uh, is about the fight on uh, the 50-day moving average. Tesla now, as you can see here, and now it needs to fight to get above the 200-day moving average. Some China numbers came out. Uh, they were obviously uh, pretty good, and Tesla had a great uh, a great uh, two-day surge. Now, the question is, again, for Tesla, the same with the Qs, can the bulls uh, finally reclaim back the 200-day moving average, which is obviously super important, and they, can they start moving their way back to the 150 that they lost here on the gap down on the earnings? We shall see, right? We shall see. So going into tomorrow, again, I think the bulls are a little tight, a little tight. Again, is it possible, you know, the Qs, you know, get to the 50-day get rejected, then reclaim and go, of course, everything's possible. But again, when you have a run from 342 to 364 in a matter of five days, right? I, again, it's very, very tough to uh, start entering fresh positions going into 50-day uh, supply. We'll see. You know, we'll see exactly uh, how it plays out. Uh, for me tomorrow, uh, I, I'm kind of doing the same thing we did today. Uh, we had a lot of bounce plays today. As you can imagine, everything gapped up today. And again, you're not going to start buying stocks up 10 11 points we're waiting for the dips and today was an, and if, if you ever taken uh if you ever seen uh the ps60 theory or watch the the workshops and again uh there's it's free guys the, the psc60 workshops are free it's like eight nine hours uh breaking down the ps60 theory we talk about bounce plays today was nothing but bounce plays we, i uh, i bounced today uh tesla we bounced today uh, what the hell did i bounce today tesla uh amazon microsoft I missed the AMD. AMD surged three and a half off the bounce. Uh, NVIDIA was a really good bounce for about four or five points. So there was some great bounces. That's what I'm looking for tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I'm looking for any weakness, for like profit taking on names like Shopify. It's basically the same play uh, as AMD. Let me show you AMD. So AMD had a massive quarter yesterday. And today, it came into the rising 60-minute support. You see that? Came into the rising 60-minute support. This is a fake wick came to the rising 60 minute support and then rally back three and a half dollars. That's kind of what I'm looking for for tomorrow on Shopify. You know, I want to see any type of sell off into rising support. Same thing I want to see on Roku as well. Any type of set, you know, any type of selling uh, profit taking into rising 60 minute support because that's where the value is. These bounces, again, as you guys in the webinar saw today, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we, rec we recorded uh, the first hour. We kind of took the snippets kind of put it into our training vault to kind of, you know, to kind of show people uh, exactly what it was. But it's, it was absolutely amazing today. The, the bounces today was, were, were super, absolutely super. Uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are starting to get more comfortable and comfortable in that. Uh, so going into tomorrow, again, that's kind of my game plan. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that I am watching for tomorrow that is not uh, beta. That's not beta. Uh, some ideas for tomorrow. Let me give you guys a couple of names I'm watching. Um yeah, look at Cart, you know, look at Instacart, right? We talked about this name uh, several times, and this was definitely one of the worst IPOs of the year, uh, maybe because they kept on price gouging everybody during COVID. You guys remember that? Instacart, yeah, we'll deliver it to your house and we'll charge you $80 for it. Well, now you're getting paid back. Anyway, so you can see the range here, right? You can see the range here. It needs to clear out. I'm going to watch this range in the next couple of days. Uh, if Instacart starts clearing out this range, maybe this thing finally uh, wakes up here. Um, you know, in the video, you know, the video is very interesting. Um, you know, very, very interesting. It's not out of the woods yet, but it's getting there, right? We had is it definitely nice pivots in the last couple of days. We had a nice bounce in this thing today. You know, I'm going to watch this top of the range here. Is it possible it reflects, uh, like on the cues and they start, you know, start driving into the 50 day moving average? Yeah, we could, we could, but the, the bigger picture on the video, uh, going into, especially going into its earnings, it's going to need to reclaim, uh, 444 on the close, right? A 444. We'll, we'll reclaim back the 50-day moving average, but that's something we want to watch uh, down the road. So listen, it's, a, it's been a really good run for the Bulls for the last three, four days. Tomorrow is the line in the sand, right? That's the only only number you need to know on the Qs is this uh, 364s area. You know, there's going to be a gunfight. There's going to be a knife fight. Uh, they're going to be hitting each other with everything, including the kitchen sink. Can the Bulls reclaim the 50? Can the Bears reject the 50? to be determined. Guys, have a great day. Have a great night. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. And with God's help, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.